Welcome back. We're going to learn some more about functional programming. I'm saying more because the last lab about list comprehensions was about functional programming, so-called because it's not object-oriented programming, which we'll look at later. But here are some functional tricks. First, let's take a look at the zip built-in function. Now, the zip returns a zip object or something that is meant to be used in a for loop. So to see the values, we have to use list to wrap around zip, and then we see the re va real values that resulted from the zip. This zip takes in these three identifiers, which are three iterables. We see the first one is a list, a string, and a tuple. And what results then is a list of tuples, and the first tuple is the first element of each of the sequences, and then the second element, etc. Now you might notice that there are five elements in chars and only four in the other two sequences. That's no problem. It's just that zip will not look at that e then. When it gets when any of your sequences run out of items, zip is finished. In the old days of Python, zip was used like this. We have a sequence, and we want to print out each of the elements and its index. We want that output, so we have to associate the index. Now, in your old language, you might have done a while loop. Maybe it looked like this. Well, you don't want to do that in Python. Enumerate is for that purpose. Enumerate is much faster, and you can't make a mistake. We'll see that. First, we'll look at this. Here, we're going to do the zip. First, the len of yums is 3. The range of the len of yums is 0, 1, 2. We zip them together, and we get 0 associated with chocolate one with whipped cream, so we can print them out. Well, Guido, our author, did not like that, too complicated. So he brought enumerate into language, very useful, very good idea. And when you enumerate a sequence, it's going to give you a tuple coming out that's the index and the item, index item. So that's all you have to do. You can't make a mistake. Map is a built-in functional programming function. You give it the identifier for any other function, and it has to be a function that can take in any of the elements that you give it in this sequence. Then each of the elements will go through that function, and what is returned will appear in the resulting list. Well, this invites a lambda. Lambda is a keyword. It is called the anonymous function or inline functionality. Here's why. If I say that keyword lambda, where map expects to see the name of a function, it's happy because it will then push each of these numbers into that x. Here's a colon. And then x squared will come out, and that's what appears. So lambda is useful when you have this to do. Lambda is more readable because it's all in one line. However, if you have to do this a lot of places, you shouldn't have duplicate code or duplicate lambdas. Here I want to show you the same thing, but in a list comprehension, which I prefer. I'll do a few more mappings. This one shows you that a tuple is just as good as a list here. I'm going to change my lambda to be just times 2, so that I'll show you the result of putting in a tuple of strings. There they are. Here I'm just putting in one string, but that's a sequence. So we get H-H-I-I. -I. Let's look at filter. My function is is even so each of these numbers will go in 
when 0 comes in, 0 modulo 2 is 0, which is false. Not false is true, so true. That means that the 0 that came in is going to appear in the list. Now then, when 1 comes in, 1 modulo 2 is 1, which is true. Not true is false, so the 1 does not appear. I'll do 7. When 7 came in, 7 modulo 2 is 1, which is true. Makes it false. Not there. Here I'll do the very same thing as a lambda. It's the same functionality. The x goes there, and the code, the return value, is there. And my favorite, of course, is a list comprehension. The if is like a filter. But even better for this example is to remember range. However, these are good facilities. You might like to know about them. And people who come from other languages might be already using them, and they might be in code you need to read. So you need to know. Give the exercises a try, and I'll see you when you're ready to move on.